Hey, what up, Card Kingdomers? Kenji back for another vintage QB. And let's just jump right in. Yeah, no power pick one, pack one, but we have a couple of cards that I do like. Um, I think this is just going to be it. Probably a time spiral here for me. Although, I don't know. Uh, man, I've been drafting a lot of blue decks lately. I kind of feel like I want to change things up and go maybe a little bit of aggro. I'm not saying this is the correct play. I'm saying that I've just drafted so much stinky blue lately that it might be time to uh, to do some aggro nonsense. I am going to first pick this Runaway Steamkin. This is not normally something I should... Uh, well, normally something I would do, uh, but I am I'm trying to to avoid the blue decks this this time because I've been on a blue deck tear. So let's try something a little bit different. Let's try to go a little bit aggressive. And I regret everything already immediately. <laughs> uh, could have taken the time spiral and then had like time twister. I mean, I will take the mana vault. It's gonna be a little bit awkward if I end up running ma uh, mono red with mana vault. But this card is just too good not to take. And, I mean, even in an aggressive deck, the Mana Vault is good, right? Accelerating you uh, by three mana on potentially turn two is, is really, really good. So, I'm not, I'm not scared yet. Okay, now I'm getting a little bit scared. We are passing. You know what? I'm going to ignore it. We're going to take the Ragavan here. I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to pass the Thoughtseize. I'm going to pass the Balance. I'm going to pass the Channel. We are going to take the Monkey. I am tired of drafting the dang controly decks, the dang slow decks, the dang combo decks. I want to just beat some faces in. I'm slamming the Ragavan. Let's go. Next pick, number four, we have a Plateau, a Char, a Sword, a Wasteland. I think this is actually a really easy Wasteland. Um, in the aggressive decks, you know, you're deploying out your your creatures or your threats. Uh, so cheaply often enough just because their mana requirements right their cost that uh taking a taking a, a land like this and setting your opponent back can often just be the the difference in the game so i think that's a good pickup there as we take a burst lightning over flame tongue yearling uh yearling is uh like the old school effects of these type of creatures so if you remember like flame tongue kavu well you have to target something if you can so if you play Yearling and your opponent doesn't have any creatures, you're going to have to shoot one of your own creatures. So, uh, Likelihood is this is going to wheel anyways, but I just prefer to take the Burst Lightning there. Oh yeah, fantastic choices here. Uh, we have a Pyromancer, a Figure of Destiny, a Walking Ballista. going to just take one of these two red cards. I think I like making sure I get the Figure of Destiny here, even though I think what you could do is like take the Pyromancer and try to wheel the figure. I think just getting the cheap threats is better, even though Pyromancer is very, very good. I want to make sure I get like all of the one drops I can. Oh, okay. I am totally down to take a Wheel of Misfortune. This is one of the strangest cards um, in the cube, just because of how many... Uh, the text. How how much you actually have to think when at the end of the day it's just a... Uh, you know, pay, pay five life, draw seven cards for Mono Red. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go over the card now. Just know that often enough, I'm going to cast this, and I'm going to draw seven cards. Um, yeah. Rampaging Ferocidon, Mishra's Factory, Phyrexian Revoker, Hangerback Walker, all decent. I think we're just going to keep taking red cards here, but I think Mishra's Factory is another good consideration. All right, as expected, Banefire did wheel. I don't think we're going to end up playing this, but... We do want to just cut off the red cards. Armageddon, I could splash for in theory. Um, we'll take it, but we already passed like the plateau, and I don't expect to get that back, so not guaranteed on that. I don't think we want to go red-white aggro, but I guess I'm going to take the... Well, no, we'll take the Blade Splicer. I mean, there's a, there's a chance we do. I just don't think it's very likely. Okay, now this is a real choice. With only a couple cards left. Sword versus Char is really interesting. I think Char is probably going to be a little bit better overall. But uh, don't get me wrong. Sword of Fire and Ice is my favorite sword. Uh, so kind of just leaning towards that because of that. Alright, nothing there. I guess I could have taken the Raging Ravine. But there's like no world where I'm playing red-green. 
Okay, good first pack. We're forcing it, but like I said, I wanted to do something a little bit different this time instead of just copy-pasting any blue artifact deck like I've been doing the uh, last week. So good to get a little bit of range going here. And this is, yeah, a good start to, to the mono red deck. Um, our best draw or our best opens are like Mox Ruby, of course, and uh, maybe Black Lotus, but we'll see what else we can find here. And yikes, this pack is terrible for mono red. I'm going to first pick this Incinerate, and then there's like nothing in this pack that we'd want to wheel. Uh, another consideration is like taking the Is It Signet for a potential blue splash. But you don't really want to be running Signets in a deck like this. So we'll just take the Incinerate and expect nothing to come back for us. Obviously not exciting, but it's a fine card. Um, Shield Breaker's good here. Petal's okay. Bergie's okay. I think here we take the Shield Breaker and then wheel the Bergie is the game plan. Uh, Shield Breaker's fantastic. Plenty of good artifacts to blow up. And uh, just turns into a creature later on, so I don't mind that pickup in the slightest. Yeah, not a bad start so far. We would like to get some of the Haymaker 4 drops like uh, Koth or Chandra. As we get a Thundermaw Hellkite and a Chain Lightning here. Once again, going to keep the curve low. I'll take the Thundermaw if it wheels, but I'd much, much rather just have the Chain Lightning. Especially when we have like Wheel of Fortune or Misfortune in our deck. Uh, we want to be able to to really dump out our hand ASAP and then, you know, refuel or whatever. I think that that usually makes the mono red decks uh, great versus just good is the potential for fast mana, you know. Uh, like, if we end up just filling out our deck with random, you know, red creatures and burn spells, but we don't get something like a Mox Ruby or a Chrome Mox, or you know something something to that effect, then um, you're kind of playing slightly disadvantaged already. Because while it is a good aggressive deck, uh, a lot of the times the other decks in this format are just doing more powerful things than you overall. So, like I said, I didn't mind the Mana Vault pick when I'm forcing the Mono Red. It's still going to have utility, but we would rather have like a Chrome Mox just for the for the pips for the potential there. Okay, and what is this? Yikes. Pick four, no, pick three, and I'm going to take this Porcelain Legionnaire, but we're passing a Mana Drain? Oh man, that kind of sucks. Winter Orb might come back around if we're lucky, and we'll definitely run Winter Orb if we get it, but yeah, we'll take the Porcelain Legionnaire. Good two-drop creature. I always call this the best two-drop in red. It's the running joke anyways. Uh, let's see, our burn spells, Chain Lightning, Burst Lightning, Incinerate, Char. Okay, we actually have quite a few burn spells already. Ooh, as we get a Lelia, Hellrider, and a Gta. Wow. This pack is very good. I've been extremely impressed by Lelia. Uh, so I think I'm going to take that here over Hellrider or Gta. I think Hellrider has a decent chance of wheeling as well, but Lelia has been just really, really solid. Okay, into a Dragon Rage Channeler, which right now is okay. Um, like I said, we have quite a few burn spells already. So another good one drop that can set up our future draws seems like the perfect pick. Yeah, blue is just super open this draft. Remand and Force of Will going super late now as well. These are both seven pick. As we get a Thirsty Adversary. This is a good one. Two mana, two, two haste in our deck. Or we can play it with five mana and uh, kick one of our burn spells. Actually, this is up to a three mana spell, is that right? Yeah, we can even kick or uh, cast the char with it too. Siege Gang Commander versus Strike. Again, I'm just gonna take the burn spell here. Don't really care for Siege Gang Commander. Don't really want a five drop. This was our initial pack, we wield nothing. Just hate on the cryptic from that blue player. <laughs> take the Bergy, like I said, I was expecting that one to wheel. Not a bad 3-3, or later on, of course, you can uh, cast as the Hor Harnfell, I guess it's called. And last few irrelevant pickups. 
But yeah, we've got a pretty solid looking deck already moving into pack three. Um, so looking for maybe a couple more solid creatures, maybe like the Eidolon. Um, what else? I guess I only have three one drops right now. Swift Spear would be nice. Uh, Lightning Bolt, of course. Fire Blast. Maybe another creature land. Already lost out on the, I think it was Factory, right? But we still could get, what, Den of the Bugbear or um, Mutavolt. That would be good. Um, and yeah, maybe one or two of those four drops I was talking about earlier. I guess we could still wheel that Hellrider, right? I think there was the possibility of wheeling the Hellrider out of this pack, too. Well, speak of the devil and it shall appear. <laughs> speak of the literal devil, creature type de uh, devil. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, this is this is looking real good. I guess I guess we don't even necessarily need some of those other components. Come on, Mox Ruby. Mox Ruby one time. I'm not being greedy. Just give me the Ruby. No! Oh my god, what a pack! Soul Ring and Emerald here? <laughs> Alright, well, I guess uh I guess I'm going to take a Soul Ring and pass a Mox Emerald because there we are. So the the no joke here, if this Emerald was Ruby, we would take the Ruby over Soul Ring. It's just so much better in the mono red deck, but uh, I do think obviously the Soul Ring is going to be a little bit better than an off-color Mox. So hoping to wheel the Wheel of Fortune, hoping to wheel the Light Up the Stage, if not the Wheel of Fortune. Shouldn't complain. We opened a Soul Ring. <laughs> uh, next pick we have ourselves an Abbot of Carol Keep a Dismember uh, or a Tangle Wire Tangle Wire should wheel right now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 7 creatures that come down on turn 1 or 2 uh, I don't think we need the Dismember because we already have a bunch of burn so let's go with the Critter here into ooh, a Shrine of Burning Rage fantastic I'm going to wheel the Seething Song, which we probably don't even want anyways, but Shrine is nice. That puts me at, what, 21 playables right now? Okay. Um, there's Koth. Another really good pack. Urza Identity. Koth Wheelgrim Lavamancer is on the game plan. Yeah, let's go, baby. Yeah, and we can cast like a turn two Koth off of a Vault or Soul Ring. So that will end some games in real short order if that happens. Uh, we're at 22 playables right now. We can get two more for the deck. This is going to be a 16 lander for sure. Maybe even less, although I guess the Wasteland is kind of like a spell in essence. Um, What else? Still looking for that, that Chrome Mox. There's an Unholy Heat here, but let's take the Den of the Bugbear, I think. With only 8 or 11 cards remaining, we're not going to see too many cards back. I don't really need the Heat. Right, we have so much burn already as it is. Chain Lightning, Burst Lightning, Incinerate, Lightning Strike, Char, the Shrine. I think we're okay to take the Den here. A Braid could be good if there was not a Bowmat in this pack. It's a nice one. That could be the deck. Oh, yeah, one more playable. Mutavolt, Chandra, or even Glorybringer. This is... Oh, this is probably just Chandra, I think. A little bit too good to pass here. Glorybringer is good, so is Mutavolt, but I think Chandra is just on a slightly higher level than it. And we could even take the Young Peasy here. One, two, three, four, five, eh. Oh, six with the Wheel of Fortune. It's fine. It's not going to make the cut, but it, it would be okay if I didn't have enough playables. There's the light up on this. So somebody did take the Wheel of Fortune. We probably want to get the light up the stage in the deck if we can, though. Um, I guess I could cut the Adversary. Is Adversary my worst two drop? It could be. There's the Tangle Wire on the wheel, too. Mm, maybe on that one. 
And some last few picks where I don't expect us to get anything else that we would want. I guess Bergy can be a cut. Yeah, Bergy's probably not good enough in this deck. I like Tanglewire, but I don't know what I would cut for it. Like I said, maybe the Adversary? Eh, but that doesn't feel right. I don't know. Yeah. That's probably okay, honestly. No, that's... Eh. I'm not sure. I need to make one cut here, and I don't know what it is. None of these. Mm, unlikely. All right, last few pickups here. I need to make one stinky cut, and I don't know what it is. Maybe it's one of the redundant three damage burn spells that costs two mana. Because we definitely need, don't need to run 17 lands here, but I think we want to run 16 when two of our lands do have abilities like that. Oh, let's see. Decent curve there. Yeah, I still think we keep the vault. I guess, yeah, we can just cut Lightning Strike. Go like that. Deck looks fantastic. Pretty happy with how we ended up. Uh, yep, yeah, could easily see this just sweeping and getting a 3-0. But uh, depending on what kind of decks we end up playing against, we could always, you know, get wrecked by just a couple more powerful uh, decks. But I think, I think this is good. Let's go. Okay, here we are for round one of this Vintage Cube Drafty with our forced mono red deck. We are on the draw, and we would really like to find another land here. But this is definitely a one-lander worth keeping. Our opponent with, ooh, turn one beach and a diamond. Hmm, so do they have a playoff of the diamond? Red. Goblin, oh, okay. So they're going to be playing an artifact deck here. It might be correct for me to just burst lightning that turn one in case they have like a frantic search or something. I think we're going to do that. Uh, the, the welder's a little bit too scary. If they have a way to discard a card, I could just easily lose the game on the spot. Wow, that is a lot of colors. Okay. Um, yeah, that's not good. Metal worker now, too. Okay, well, they only have two cards left in their hand, so hopefully that's not too much of an issue, but... We could definitely run into an issue there as well. Oh, all right. So, I am missing a land drop here, but I think I like killing the metal worker a little bit more than killing the diamond. Because if we can just grind a few of their cards out, we might be able to just win with a couple random uh, creatures after the fact. And I don't mind missing that one land drop now. Yeah, they had a chalice. So that was already two extra mana. Two cards left in their hand, though, so... I'm actually not feeling bad for having missed as many lands as I have. And now we can go, like... Vault into Shrine, into, let's go ahead and just play the Shield Breaker to use most of our mana efficiently, and start getting that all online. Other option was to go like Dragon Rage Channeler, into Vault Surveil, into Shrine Surveil. Um, which, eh, I'm not gonna say it was 100% better, but it was, it might have been a little bit better. As they have a Karn here. Okay. So they can make a 3-3 token if they want to. Hmm. We'll see what they end up doing. Yeah, they are going to make a Construct. That's, that's a very fast clock. 
Hopefully I can find a couple of ways to deal with those. Darn it, that's no good. All right, we'll play out both of our one drops and say go. Yeah, I think if they, yeah, they should probably just Karn minus and make another token. It's going to be hard for me to be, oh my gosh, they have a Telerian Academy now. Yeah, that's bad. Well, they are definitely doing stronger things than I am. Kaldatha Forge Master now too. All right. Well, that might be the end of that. Probably just get, need to move on to game two. Go ahead and take the hit for five. If I draw a land, I probably just need to shrine the Forge Master down. Not great. Not great at all. But even just blowing that up is not going to, like, I think this is probably just a, a scoop, honestly. Using Shrine on a creature is just so bad. And I still can't attack. They just have a bunch of fatties. All right, activate Karn, we'll give them Ancient Tomb. They already have infinite mana, so I don't want to give them colored sources. I guess if they attack, I'm just going to triple block one of them. It's so bad, but what other option do I really have? All right, Marsh Flats. Okay, so... Only one unknown card, though. Like, maybe there's a world where I can triple block one, draw a land for Chandra, Chandra the other. Oh, they had Oust. That sucks. Okay, but this is still technically winnable. Like, they don't want to lose their Karn, so... Oh, I'm surprised. I thought they were only going to attack with one. Yeah, we'll chump one. Go to 12. Shieldbreaker can attack and kill the Karn. If I draw a land here for Chandra, we can shoot down one of the creatures. Damn it. Well. Still need to kill the Karn, but now we don't even get the... Uh, now we don't even get the light up the stage for one mana. I need to hit land in the one drop here. Okay, we did. So now we can chump again. Remember, they have Ancient Tomb in their hand, so... Could, in theory, still grind it out here if they top deck nothing for the next couple turns. No, no, no. No, no, no. Why do you do, why do, you do this? <laughs> why would you do that to me? <laughs> All right. Can probably scoop it up. This looks like a matchup we should win pretty easily, honestly. Like, I missed a couple land drops, so we didn't get to apply the early pressure, and they had a really fast start. Looks like they're tutoring for something that costs two, so that's going to make their constructs five fives. Yeah, so now I can't even Chandra kill one of them anymore. Oh, they tutored for Ballista! Whoopsies. Okay, hold up. Hold up, hold up. So they attack with both, I chump one, I go to seven, Mana Vault pings me to six, I play Chandra, I kill the token, I kill Tezzeret. This is still technically winnable. Chump, go to seven, Mana Vault puts me to six, Chandra, ping a token. 
that is wow we have a bunch of dead cards in our hand wheel is a dead card here tangle wire is kind of a dead card for i mean i guess ferocinon is not 100 percent dead but it's not good and that's going to shrink the size of their construct token as well this is manageable and i mean they're probably going to kill the chandra instead of hitting my face i would think Let's see what they do. Yep, killing Chandra. Okay. Pass. That's good. So we're going to fall to five. Nice draw, actually, because now we can go Bomat Courier into Ferocidon. Attack for three. Ferocidon can trade with the Construct token. Assuming they don't draw another artifact, which, I mean, maybe I should be a little bit more careful about that. Oh no! We're going to die to the Colonnade! Okay, so that means... Them having Colonnade means I have to block here, trade, and then untap my Mana Vault. That's funny. Actually, does Tangle Wire save me then? If I Tangle Wire, they have to tap four of their mana sources. Hmm. They're going to 11 here? Uh, no, but then I, then I wouldn't be able to untap my mana vault the next turn. Right? Let's see, they would have to tap four. Oh, wait, they have Talarian Academy. That adds two already, so... One, two, three. Yeah, I don't think that works. I think we just have to den and pass. Looks like they're flooding out a bit. All right, here comes the colonnade activation. I go down to one. Can I find enough points of burn next turn? <sighs> it's going to be close. Ragavan dash is kind of interesting. Let's see. Tangle wire. They would have to tap four. They would go one, two, three, four. They would still have enough to animate the colonnade. Well, Ragavan is kind of like a free roll. It only costs one mana to dash it in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, if I animate the Den of the Bugbear here and then draw any of my one mana burn spells, we can win this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That puts them to two. I'm going to get a... Okay, this is going to work, actually. Or it could work, I should say. We actually have quite a few outs here. Hit a Relic of Progenitus. All right, so now we sack the Bowmat and try to find, like, Chain Lightning. Or oh, incinerate with the land! Yes! <laughs> in freaking credible, we did it. Woohoo! All right. Oh, oh, oh. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Saved, baby, saved. All right. Um, on the draw, I think we're going to take out the Tangle Wire because they showed us that they can put out a bunch of permanents really easily. And let's just bring in another burn spell. Whew, let's go to game two. All right, here we are for game two of the first round. And yeah, this hand looks really juicy. We can go turn one Soul Ring into Bowmat Courier and Smash. Okay. Don't need to draw any more lands for the rest of the game. 
That would be ideal. And then next turn we can dash the Ragavan and then light up a stage after. Hopefully they're just playing another tap land here. Or they shock and play like a random signet that we don't care about. Perfect. Just like the doctor ordered. All right, so let's go ahead and dash like this, floating one. Actually, I know, you know what? I think I'm, act I'm just gonna play out the adversary now. This is, uses up all our mana efficient, efficiently. It hits him for five. I still get another treasure. I still get another Bowmat activation. Like, we don't need to light up the stage right now. Hit a Mox Diamond. Wow, that's actually nuts, because I can play that discarding one of the lands. That had to be one of the few cards we could hit off of that. Let's go ahead and spectacle our light up the stage now, too. And we hit a land plus char. Excellent. Well, this is about as good as we could have hoped for. Goblin Welder, that's fine. I oh, need to tap the Signet the other way first. No, you need to untap and tap the Signet. Signets on Magic Online are funny. <laughs> you have to pay the one cost before you can tap it. There you go. Oh, okay, both Welder and Metal Worker this turn. <clears throat> All right, so let's land from the light up a stage and I guess we're gonna char. Do I wanna char face or do I wanna char a creature? Four damage is a lot. But I think we get rid of the metal worker here. Dash the monkey and attack for five. I'm assuming they're going to trade for Ragavan. Oh, they're going to block the Bowmat. Okay. I'm fine with that too. I'll go ahead and pop it then. Good hits. Hit a Relic of Progenitus. And since they have Welder, that actually makes a lot of sense to cast out. <laughs> uh kind of hitting perfectly here. Oh, funny thing, they can weld my Bowmat back in and make me sacrifice the diamond or the relic or the treasure token or the soul ring. That's freaking hilarious. Remember, welder can choose any player. Got to tap your signet first again. Tezzeret, that's good. So do we just kill him next turn? No, not quite. Oh, minus four, okay. You have like a lodestone golem or something? Because Karn the Planeswalker is not a uh, an artifact. I 
Ah, Solemn Simulacrum. That's a good one, too. That's a really good weld target. going on with that art there okay let's see what we find Lelia off the top huh that's pretty good I guess here what I'm gonna do is Lelia first And then just attack. See if we find something good off of Lelia before deciding if we want to run out any of these cards. Wheel of Misfortune! That's pretty good. Uh, so we can... Hmm. We can Chandra into Wheel if we want to. That might be worth it. Okay, they're going to trade for our adversary, yeah. I mean, hmm. I feel like just getting Chandra online and pinging them is probably good, right? And that way we can still hold up the relic if they try to weld. Yeah, let's do that. What do we hit? Porcelain Legionnaire? No cast. Goodbye, Wheel of Misfortune. Goodbye, Porcelain Legionnaire. Not sure what they can do here. Well, I'm sure there are a ton of things they can do here in, in Vintage Cube, but Doretti's not it. They're trying to weld. We'll go ahead and exile the graveyards now. Ah. I think Incinerate might be good. Sack their Signet, kill Lelia. That's okay. They they should know I have Ragavan in my hand, too. Ragavan's just lethal with the Chandra uptick. Maybe they shock themselves. And <laughs> All right, GG's. I won't make you wait. I'll just shoot your face and got him round one. Let's do that two more times. Okay, here we are for round two of this vintage QB draft. We're on the draw, sadly, but our hand looks pretty darn good. Oh yeah, our hand is, our hand looks like it's gonna slap as we get our soul ring spell pierced, whatever. That don't matter to me. It does, but that's not as good in our deck as other decks, I would say, anyways, so. Damn, that's too bad we were on the draw. Because oh, on the play, I think this would be a steamrolling. Opponent on that blue-red life, perhaps? What do you got here for four mana? Solemn Simulacrum, but. Another solemn player, huh? Oh, they are just mono blue. Okay. Chain lightning was good. Let's go ahead and lead off with Abbott and see if we can find a land here. We didn't. We bricked with a tangle wire. Okay, well, we'll just play out figure of destiny. Smack in for three. 
And hope, hopefully they don't tinker into something fat. I guess they could have tinkered last turn if they had it. Ah, we're playing against another Academy deck. What are the chances? Four mana, five mana, there's the Golos, okay. And they can tap Academy for three currently. They might not have any other good lands to get. Yeah, they just got another island since their Academy's already on the board. Um, that was a good draw. So, what we can do here is... Well, actually... I could burst lightning the Solemn Simulacrum if I want to. How much mana do I have? Because I can... I can almost get this back to a 4-4. Four, four. I can actually get it back to a 3-3 three, three this turn. I'm just debating if I want to burst lightning the Solemn and attack, or if I want to chain lightning and burst lightning the, Sol uh, the Golos. Because this is just a 3-5 at the end of the day. This would end up trading here. I guess I wouldn't have to attack with it, though. Could also just ignore that. Maybe I just go all out face, because they'd be taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, they would be taking quite a bit. Of, okay, let's just go with the chain lightning on the solemn then. See if they have a counter. I get to draw a card. That's fine. Three, four. Hell Rider. And then attack with everything. Ping them for four off that. So we can almost just kill him here, right? But I guess we want to burst lightning the Golos. Probably. We'll see what they block. I mean, I'm assuming this is blocking Hellrider. Yeah. So I guess we probably want to kill the Golos here. And the reason we're doing this pre-combat is because it pumps up our Steamkin and our Abbot. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They go to four. Looks like a pretty good board. We also made their Academy much worse. Okay, do they have like an upheaval? That's not good enough. Well, they have two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are a lot of things they could have in blue that kind of stabilize, but this is eight. Okay, so if I draw an untapped land, I win with den. So let's do that. Land wins. Let's go. Come on, land. Untap land. GG. Give it to me. That's not a land, but at least it draws some cards. Land. Bowmat. Attack face for one. And then when they target the Bowmat with Ugin, we can draw that one card. And they still need something to block the den, too, so.
Attacking the Ugin didn't matter because it would just be at 6 instead of 7, so the ultimate is still available in a couple turns anyways. Oh, hopefully they don't have too much. That doesn't look good for me. Ah, they're just going to make a token, so it's going to be a 3-3. Three, three. Okay. Yep. It's close. <laughs> that is a fantastic draw. Uh, yeah, we go for that for sure. If they don't have a counter here, we're going to draw seven cards. All right, and that looks like an incinerate to me. Boop. Got him. So with Wheel of Misfortune, both players choose a number secretly. Then whoever chose the highest number loses that much life and draws seven cards after discarding their hand. That's that's the baseline of it. The person that chose the lower number does nothing. Uh, if you choose the same number, I believe nothing happens. Sorry. If both players choose the same number... Um, then they both lose that much life and don't draw any cards. Right, okay. Yes. <laughs> Reading the card sometimes explains the card, except when the card is hard to understand. Uh, we don't have much of a sideboard for them. We just have to kind of kill them before they get their fat stuff out. So it's a race. Us on the uber aggro burn deck versus them on the artifact ramp fatty deck. Game two here. I cannot keep this hand versus them. Uh, I need actual sticky threats, so not just burn spells in the opener. So we're going to have to mulligan down to six. Oh, God, why? Why would you do this? I can't keep this, right? This is... turn. Well, I'm on the draw. I mean... This is so bad. Don't try this at home, kids. We get to go turn one Dragon Rage Chandler, turn two Soul Ring Surveil. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Worst possible draw in the deck. Mountain number five there. Mm. That's brutal. <sighs> Are you kidding? Am I a joke to you? I don't really care if they spell pierce this. I mean, again, it sucks, but... Yeah, we're going to keep that on top. That's pretty incredible, though. Mm. That, was the, that was the difference in the game. Either draw two spells and be happy, or... Draw two lands and concede is basically what's happening here. Sure. So we want to draw like Chandra next turn or something like that. Any spell, please. I hear spells are good. If we draw on random instant or sorcery burn spell, we do fire it off. All right, shrine's fine. Um... Oh, I'm going to keep that. I think I have to go greedy. We really need them to not do anything relevant next turn because the Tangle Wire is going to buy us a lot of time, I think. What the hell is this? Shark Typhoon? Oh, okay. Sure.
Come on, deck. Nope, I need you to not do anything big. Just another signet is okay. I topped a gosh darn tangle wire, so. <laughs> high risk, high reward here. Whatever this is, don't do it. Stop. Nope, too much mana. And that's a scoop. All right. You got me. This should be a pretty decent match overall, I think. Let's just not have that type of hand again, slash be smart and actually mulligan if we do. But we'll be on the play here for game three. Um, so I think we can probably just go underneath the mono blue deck, uh, assuming they don't get to ramp up into like Ugin on turn four or whatever. On the play. This hand's great. We're certainly just going to slam the monkey on turn one. We have too many good things to do with our mana. We have a shield breaker for their first artifact, so... This is looking really, really good already. Oh, a Signet? Wow, good start for them. Very, very good. Let's go ahead and attack in for two. I pray to God they don't have... Uh, Academy in their hand. So we hit another Signet. So let's go Steamkin here into Kill the Signet. Hoping to draw a couple more lands here. Narset's fine. I found a Karn. That's okay as well. Burst Lightning. I guess what I'm supposed to do is Shield Breaker to make the Steamkin a 3-3. Attack Narset, kill it. Ragavan at face. Get a treasure. Steal another Signet and just pass here. Yep, Karn's fine. We don't care about that. They can just make a token, but we can immediately shoot it, and that should be... Pretty close to game over, I think. So let's see, I can go Shrine into Burst, have three. No, so we need to go Burst, three, four, Hellrider. Uh, it's that to Karn to kill it. These are all at face. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So yeah, we do kill the Karn here. Get him down to 6. Get another treasure. And I don't think we're going to play the Shrine out. Because if they do somehow wrath me with like a balance or whatever, I need to uh, be able to play Chandra afterwards. Uh, what could they do for 5 mana? I guess they could have like treachery in the something, but yeah. Easy baby GG, what a hand. Alright, let's try to pull off that 3-0. Okay, my Card Kingdom friends, here we are for the third and final round of the Vintage Cube Draft. We are on the play finally, and our hand is pretty disgusting. Uh, a little bit, um, mana... Heavy, yes, but I get to go turn one Soul Ring Shrine into turn two Steamkin. So if we can just draw a couple more pieces of action off the top, um, we are going to be looking fantastic. Opponent Tickle Mulligan down to six. Turn one Shrine of Burning Rage, let's go. Versus green. Elvish Mystic. All right, that is a good candidate for a burn spell. Ah! Like I said, we do need to find a little bit more action. I think bolting the Mystic is a very easy play. A land next turn, and we might be dead, honestly. Wait, that's interesting. Come on, Spell Rider, Chandra, something. Oh man, that is that is extremely brutal. Our opening hand might have been as close to 
the best possible, but then drawing a land, land. Yeah, that's really bad. And that's the worst possible land too, because we also have Den of the Bugbear and a Wasteland in our deck, so every mountain we draw is just... Ugh. Mm, brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. I think it was pretty hard to lose there if we just drew any relevant spell, but... All right, let's see what you got, OP. Green Sun for two, maybe? Finale for one? Okay. It could be worse. Sure. Come on, relevant spell? Please? That's good. We needed that last turn. If we drew that last turn, the game was over, but... So the problem with this play is that I give them a window to kill my Shrine of Burning Rage because I don't get to hold up three mana here. But I mean, I cannot just pass. Hold. Make it or break it, baby. Make it or break it. I mean, I guess the nice thing is they have to have a removal spell for Shrine of Burning Rage this turn. Otherwise, they're basically just dead, right? Because it's going to tick up to seven. And then, I mean, I could just attack with two creatures, ping them for two, and then finish them off for seven. So Shrine is a must-kill target. And then if they do use a removal spell on Shrine, um, presumably my creatures might still be alive. They did? Okay, so they paid. They went to three. What do they have here? Knight of Autumn. So they have to kill the shrine. They cannot gain life. They have two mana left. Maybe a removal spell? Image. Image on Knight of Autumn give a, gain another four. Okay. Okay, they're in this. And Lelia should probably take everything away from them. <laughs> Yeah, hit an incinerate. All right, GG's. <laughs> Ooh, it was scary there at first. I'm not going to lie. It was super scary. Drawing those lands back to back. Thankfully, we were able to finish. Uh, let's bring in another burn spell since they have a lot of mana dorks, it looks like. And then what do I want to cut? The Tangle Wire, perhaps? They did have quite a few permanents. Yeah, cutting Tangle Wire on the draw, I think, makes sense. All right, let's go to the next game. Let's see if we can get that trophy with a nice mono red. Mm, and here's game number two of the final round. We are up, up, up a game, but I don't think we can keep this hand. Um, Ragavan's not even that good versus them anyway, since they have a bunch of mana dorks that that can block with. So we'll go down to six. And yeah, that looks like a pretty good looking six. Um, let's pitch the, ooh, I mean, this is a little bit awkward, but let's pitch one of our red sources here and keep all of these other cards. If they lead with like a tap duel, I will just wasteland turn one. But they have a forest and a mana dork. Okay, so we're gonna go probably forest Sorry, uh, Den into Dragon Rage Channeler, and then next turn we can go Soul Ring, Surveil into like Char, depending on what they do here. Ah, they can Ren and Six and ping my. Oh my gosh, and Ren and Six completely hoses my. Uh, <laughs> completely hoses my. Uh, my Wasteland play. Rude, rude, rude. Was a good draw. Yeah, I th think here we're probably going to end up charring the Ren and Six. Ah, but man, killing that pet Pilgrim is also super tempting. 
Hmm. This is interesting. Actually, th ah, let's kill the Ren and Six. Ah, because now my Wasteland is turned online. So next turn I can go Chandra plus Wasteland. That seems better. No whammies here. Hopefully they don't blow up my Soul Ring. I said not to do that, friend. I guess you're no friend of mine. Ooh, and they have another Mana Dork. Damn. Huh, okay, well this is actually really bad for us now because now my Wheel of Misfortune is completely dead and Chandra's just going to be facing a little bit too much pressure here. Yeah, it's probably game over. Alright, good beats. I'm going to have to like Chandra kill the tracker. Hmm, I wonder if I should also bring in Banefire. Lelia, my friend, you are a little bit too slow. All right, shoot the tracker. <clears throat> they can draw a card here, whatever, that's fine. They get to maybe hit me for two and then kill Chandra with the Pilgrim. So they're like five color green, I guess? I brought in the lightning strike. I guess we probably want the, eh. Yeah, with this many mana dorks, we should definitely bring in Banefire for, for one, right? That seems right. Trigun Predator, yeah. Okay, I mean, this is a good turn for me. I get to Lelia and attack. Oh, assuming the last card in their hand isn't removal. It is? Wow. What a, okay. Good beats. Yep. We'll just scoop to that. I think that's fine. I mean, their mana base is super greedy, so if we can just kill off the mana dorks, we shouldn't have too much of a problem. Um, did we see any artifacts for Shield Breaker? I think we'll swap the, the Bane Fire in for the Shield Breaker. Our best card in our opener might just be like Burst Lightning for the random one drop. All right, game three here of the final round. This is for a trophy. We're playing against like five color green. Ah, uh, once again, this is a little bit land heavy, but it is a keep. Really wish this hand, opening hand had a monkey in it. No one drop really sucks. Yeah. So we're going to go Banefire here for one on the Hierarch, and then next turn we can go Steamkin into Chain Lightning if they have another Mana Dork. If they don't, great. We can just play the Den then, and Steamkin pass. Hopefully that crippled them. They might have been banking on that Ignoble Hire. Given them how many colors we know they're running. Let's see, they had Knight. Of Autumn in their deck, they had Phantasmal Image, they had Trigon Predator. What else did they have? Reclamation Sage, Lightning Helix. What is this? Oh, is this Finale for one again? That's good. All right, so we can Chain Lightning. The Avacyn's Pilgrim, assuming. And then attack for two, and then light up a stage. Go digging for goodies here. Oh, right, they can search from Graveyard, too. Haha. <laughs> of course. 
Uh, yeah, let's chain lightning. Attack for two, that enables spectacle. Land and a burst lightning. Wow, we are actually flooding out really bad again. <sighs> and they drew a god the shrine now too. Crap. They might just pass here. If they do, we're gonna burst lightning their face end of turn and then animate the den and hit him for what eight. Not a bad sequence, but again, I just need to find a little bit more juice. Oh my god. This is actually kind of frustrating. Ugh. Five, six, seven, eight lands and five spells. Yep. Brutal. Are you freaking kidding me, dude? Man, alive. That's so gross. Ugh. Oh, good beats. That's magic sometimes for you. Yeah, they have a second Gargaroth. At least that one I can just target with anything, but... Ugh, that's frustrating. <sighs> what do we need to draw? Like, Wheel of Misfortune could maybe save me? Like, I think I have to double block here and just lose if they have any removal. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have no other options. Maybe we can draw a way to target the this one, and then that'll kill that. Are you joking? And just like that, we lose. Oh man, I'm f I'm upset. That's so frustrating. Ten lands, five spells. Ah well. Sometimes that is what the way the cookie crumbles, my friends. It hurts. It sucks. It stings. But what are you gonna do? Hmm. I think we maybe have one more draw step to find some. I mean, again, this one, at least we can just target it with anything, so. <sighs> we're unlikely to win this, but uh, I wouldn't say we're, we're shooting 0% quite yet. Omnath, yeah, gain four. <laughs> All right, I guess we lose. Well, that was fun. Sure, sure, sure. Hey, we did it, more land. More mana sources. Oh man, we were up a game in the final round and then that happens? Why? Uh, I guess I could have ran 15 land. I don't think that's right though, when one of them's a wasteland and one of them's a den. And what would I be replacing it with? Like, Banefire, maybe the Bergy would have been okay. I think that was just, I mean, that was obviously just a bad flood, so. GG's, hopefully you enjoyed. We did some crushing, we did some losing, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.